this session is assistive devices, and we'll start off with Rachel Jackson from Carnegie Mellon. We are interested in designing new and more effective robotic gait rehabilitation devices for stroke patients. The main gait rehabilitation technique in use is manual assistive therapy. Uh, and though effective, this is expensive and um, physically demanding on, phys on the therapist thereby limiting the frequency, duration, and intensity of rehabilitation sessions. However, when it comes to rehabilitation, more is better. Robotic trainers have been developed to try to overcome the shortcomings inherent in manual assistive therapy. These devices, however, are missing one key component, active patient engagement. Thus, we want devices that are capable of providing continual rehabilitation that requires active patient use of the affected muscles. So there's an optimal uh, muscle activity that during walking that minimizes effort. And you can give a person some assistance that reduces this overall effort. Stroke patients, however, do not operate at this optimal muscle activity. This could be due to the fact that they can't stimulate their muscles enough because of the neurological injury, or they may be choosing not to use their muscle or walk because it is difficult or it is just unreliable. So our goal with assistive devices is to is twofold. First, to uh, actually make walking easier and at the same time, increase the use of targeted muscles. So the idea is to provide assistance that is proportional to an increase in the muscle use. So first, you, know, you want to lower the effort necessary for using the muscle at its current level, and then um, put them on a steeper gradient such that by increasing muscle use, we, uh, there's a greater decrease in overall effort. So this idea kind of relates to Nathaniel Skinner's work that Art mentioned in a talk a few nights ago. And um, some questions that we have here are, you know, will people realize this relationship? And if they do, will they choose to utilize the assistance? So we set up a technique to try to implement this reward-based strategy. We designed an ankle foot orthosis that is capable of providing assistive plantar flexor torques as a function of the ankle angle. And the idea is that by varying the torque curve, you can get different levels of assistance from this device. We measure muscle activity from the, using electromyography and use this to control the assistance level from the device. We set maximum and minimum assistance thresholds uh, based on muscle activity during uh, baseline walking. and. Any muscle activity that falls within these thresholds can result in a proportional amount of assistance from the device. So we've been experimenting with a number of different ways to try to understand the interaction that's taking place and to see if we can affect muscle use. So we looked at using the left soleus muscle or the right soleus muscle to control assistance to the right leg. We also tried imposing an artificial deficit on the person that worked to counteract the assistive device to make it more um, <coughs> enticing to utilize the assistance from the device for able-bodied people. And we were looking at muscle activity, uh, ankle kinematics, and metabolics data. So the data shown here is extremely preliminary, and what I will say is uh, just very speculative and should not be taken as anything set in stone. Um, but we basically ran this trial where we imposed an artificial deficit on a subject and we used the right soleus muscle to control assistance to the right limb. And the idea was to try to follow the general trend in the muscle activity with these thresholds. Interestingly enough, it seems that the muscle activity actually decreased over the course of this 30 minute trial. And preliminary metabolics data suggest that uh, the variation in assistance that the device is capable of providing may not be as great as we were anticipating. And so the subject may be uh, just utilizing the assistance of the device rather than trying to increase their muscle activity to get to that maximum level of assistance that isn't quite different than the minimum. Um, for comparison, we also did some studies where we used the left soleus muscle to control muscle activity, uh, to control the assistance given to the right leg. and over time, there was not really a general trend seen in the change in muscle activity. And so with this, we kind of wanted, I had some open questions, and the main one being, what factors really affect the interaction that is taking place? How much assistance is necessary for a given increase in muscle activity? Um, what about the, the proximity of the control muscle to the assisted joint? 
Uh, what about all of these things that we can we can factor, such as you know the setting of the thresholds and the num that number of steps we average over? And then what are the different heuristics that are in place here? And with that, I'd like to kind of open up for questions.
some of that increased limp, and they're still limping. But then when you turn the belt back to running at the same speed, the limp is at least transiently gone. So like you have to make them work harder, like make it actually harder for them, and then they sort of compensate for some of it. And then the after effect is that they do it sort of without limping. And, and, and I couldn't tell if you were trying to take advantage of something similar. I think um, with the imposed deficit, we were definitely trying to, to do something similar, kind of to make an able-bodied subject walk almost, uh, because the, the problem is that we're not working with, with stroke patients at this point, so we're testing these <coughs> concepts on, on able-bodied subjects, so making walking <coughs> right harder, um, and then the assistance from, from the device in some way kind of is a, a added benefit to this, and trying to create some asymmetry that they'll want to correct for. Um, so in a similar, along a similar vein, yes. Well, let's thank the speaker.